Okay, so Sunday night we have WWE Fastlane, the next big pay-per-view WWE is doing. And it replaces the Elimination Chamber, which for years had been used to determine who would either be the number one contender for one of the two world titles or, after last year, became who would go to WrestleMania as the champion to take on the winner of the Royal Rumble. <clears throat> They've got an interesting card going here. All the championships, save Brock Lesnar and the WWE world title, are on the line, while Brock Lesnar himself gets another month off to get ready for the main event of WrestleMania. Personally speaking, this card looks like it was just thrown together to try and hype the fact that this month is free for new subscribers of the WWE Network, and that they're trying to get people to, to come and watch this show before WrestleMania next month. To be honest, it's a decent card, don't get me wrong. But I expect that in the end, all the champions will keep their titles for whatever reason to build towards WrestleMania next month. We'll start with the Divas title. It's been no secret. I think that a lot of people will believe that the Divas championship will remain with Nikki Bella because there's reports out there that you might have the Bella twins and then either Paige or Natalya or even a returning AJ come back and have a triple threat at WrestleMania for the championship. That's where I would expect Nikki to lose it. Probably to Bray to finish whatever feud they had started or whatever the heck they decided to do from last year. The Intercontinental title, while I would love to see Dean Ambrose win it, I don't think he's ready for it yet. Barrett has done a good job being the typical antagonistic champion and seeing that he is the highest ranked champion in the company right now with Lesnar out, I would expect Barrett to Keep the title until WrestleMania. If they do decide to have change hands, then we could have an even better rematch next month at WrestleMania. But <clears throat> I expect Wade Barrett to keep, or Bad News Barrett actually, I would expect Barrett to keep the title after Sunday night. As for the tag team titles, as much as this could, kid, Tyson Kid Cesaro team, when I first saw them put together, I thought it was crazy. Tyson Kid and Cesaro, they had nothing really meshing. But week after week, they've gotten better, and I'm starting to come to like them as a tag team. They've got, you've got Cesaro's natural gift as a wrestler, pure talent, undervalued, <clears throat> and his brute strength meshes well with Tyson Kidd's high-flying abilities and technical prowess. These two are both very well-rounded technical athletes, and it works well for both of them that these guys could make and become a great tag team. That being said, they're not winning the title Sunday night. I think that uh, the Usos should still hold on to them because it looks like they're gearing the Ascension, who will probably take on the primetime players tomorrow night, or Sunday night, I should say, in either the pre-show match or an impromptu match added to the card. You're probably going to see the Ascension get a shot at the Tekken titles at WrestleMania where the Usos will beat them, but I'll get down to that one further down the road. Then we go to the United States title match. I expect Rusev to retain. Cena won't tap out. It's not in his character, WWE will never have Cena submit. The way I could see Rusev keeping the, inter the United States t Championship would simply be that Rusev wins by ref stoppage, similar to how Kevin Owens beat Sami Zayn for the NXT title back at TakeOver Rival. <clears throat> they mentioned on the Raw pre-show this past week that John Cena is still suffering from the injury uh, to his eye, but for some reason during Raw Monday night, the eye injury wasn't there. So I expect that injury to return Sunday night, Rusev to go after it, and the referee stop the match because they're going to deem Cena can't continue. It's a way to keep Rusev looking strong going towards WrestleMania. It's a way to keep Cena relevant because we know Cena, really, you can't beat Cena any other way when you make him look bad. And then it'll lead to the rematch between the two at WrestleMania where Cena will probably beat, most likely beat Rusev and bring the United States title back to the U.S. <clears throat> and on, the, on the subject of the U.S. title, a lot of people said the United States championship hasn't been relevant in years. And in some ways, you're right. Uh, normally, when a guy wins the title the last couple of years, the person hasn't defended the championship for a prolonged period. Or when it's Kofi Kingston, he's just simply taking it to put it on somebody else. But let's keep in mind that since Rusev beat Sheamus for the U.S. title back late last year, the United States Championship has become very relevant because people want to beat Rusev and take the belt back. Cena winning the title, whether it's Sunday Night at Fastlane or if it goes all the way to WrestleMania, would once again make the title relevant 
I think Cena would be more than willing to hold the championship because a lot of people have criticized WWE that they're not pushing their titles as much as they used to. You think back in the day, everybody was talking about, oh, <clears throat> uh, Ric Flair, if he wasn't world champion, would hold the U.S. title, or Arn Anderson would go for the tag team or the TV title, and that's back in WCW. In the old WWF, the Intercontinental, the European, the Hardcore, those meant just as much as being the WWF champion. But today, all the focus seems to be on the WWE champion. I liked it for this feud to between Barrett and uh, Ambrose, that Ambrose is referencing all the great intercontinental champions. Stone Cold, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, Mr. Perfect. And these are guys that held the title and would go on to defend the title week in and week out, where Barrett has been ducking. Now the WWE started to realize, oh, hey, we have these extra belts. Maybe we should make them relevant. So I like that they're doing that. And that can really help out if John Cena becomes U.S. champion. Well, I would like to see them hold off on that until WrestleMania, allow Rusev one more month as champion, build to a bigger match at WrestleMania. I do see Cena getting the championship back. It would make the title major relevance again. And you never know, Cena could use the fact that he's the United States champion to either do like he did with the WWE world title to unify it with the Intercontinental, which I don't like that idea, or use it to parlay himself to a WWE world title match somewhere down the line. I just found out recently they added a six-man tag to the pay-per-view, which I expected to happen all along. It'll be Seth Rollins teaming with the Big Show and Kane against the other members of Team Cena from Survivor Series, Dolph Ziggler, Eric Rowan, and uh, Ryback. This match, I expect Ziggler's team to win because we are waiting desperately for Randy Orton to return to set up his program with Seth Rollins at WrestleMania, and this is the time to do it. If you bring Orton back Sunday night, like during the scuffle, because you know J and is going to be there, they're going to get involved. We all know it. This is the first time where like all the brawls going on outside. Referee will be distracted. He'll try to throw J and J out. He'll tell Big Show and them to stop beating up Rowan and Ryback. And then out of nowhere, Randy Orton hits an RKO on Rollins and allows Ziggler to get the win, thus setting up Randy versus Rollins at WrestleMania. Then it opens up Ziggler. Ziggler can go to something else at WrestleMania. I would like to see Eric Rowan and Ryback maybe face Kane and Big Show at WrestleMania, and that's begin the dissension of the authority where uh, either Kane will go back to being a good guy or Big Show back to being a good guy. Although Big Show just turned heel, I would sooner see Kane go back to being a good guy because we all know this authority angle is probably going to end at WrestleMania, if not sometime shortly after. Um... Goldust versus Stardust. I think Goldust will win the match Sunday night to knock some sense into his brother, and it'll eventually wash away Cody Ro- uh, Stardust from Cody Rhodes, and he'll go back to being Cody. And then at WrestleMania, we'll get Cody versus Goldust because uh, Dustin Reynolds, who plays who is Goldust, has said for years that he would love one match with his brother. We could possibly get two, and that would be good for everybody. Goldust has put on some phenomenal matches since he's returned to the WWE a couple of years ago. For a guy in his 40s getting ready to push into his 50s, Dustin has put on some phenomenal matches these last couple of years. And he's already said that he would love nothing more than to help put over his little brother Cody one last time. Look out for it. Um, my cat wanted to get involved. So these two would have a fantastic match. I think they'll have a great match at Fastlane. I think you can have a better match at WrestleMania when Cody, when Cody doesn't have to play Stardust but he can be Cody Rhodes. And then he can go on back to going after the Intercontinental, the United States, even probably start pushing him towards the WWE Championship. <clears throat> Finally, the main event. We have Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan. I know people are going to hate me for this, but I hope Roman wins. Daniel Bryan had his chance last year. None of us were happy with how, it, how his title reign ended. But you can't help the fact when a guy gets hurt, and Daniel Bryan got hurt. Yes, he's owed a rematch. Yes, he's owed a fair shot at becoming the champion. But right now, this is Roman Reigns' time. Everyone has known since last year that Roman Reigns was going to win this year's Royal Rumble and go on to face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania for the championship. The original plan, a lot of people seem to forget, because it was reported all throughout from March straight through to August, 
was that Brian was supposed to hold the championship to SummerSlam, and he was the guy that was supposed to wrestle Brock Lesnar for the WWE Championship. Which means that those 16 German suplexes that Cena took, those were meant for Daniel Bryan. That complete and total butchering of John Cena that happened at SummerSlam was meant for Daniel Bryan. And ended up going to John Cena because Bryan got hurt and the WWE needed somebody that they know they could put the company on to make a better, to, to keep the story going. And the only person you could look at at that point was John Cena because he's the face of the company. So I hate to say it, but Cena's 15th world championship in the WWE was kind of wasted because you pretty much made him a transitional champion. He was the, he was the guy that took the belt from Daniel Bryan and put it on Lesnar. And I'm pretty sure you could have asked anybody at that point. You could have had Ziggler. You could have had Cesaro. You could have had Orton. You could have had Kane. You could have had any one of them do it. But WWE looked at John Cena because they figured this is the only guy we could put the belt on with Brian Hurd. He's the only man we could put the belt on, have him get his butt kicked by Lesnar at WrestleMania, at SummerSlam, I mean. And then it not affect him. And it didn't. Cena's popularity is still strong with women and kids. Guys still say Cena sucks. But his popularity is still there. Love him or hate him, he is still there. He is still extremely relevant. So, but Brian had his chance last year. Everybody will say otherwise, oh, Brian should have won the Royal Rumble. Brian should have gotten a second shot at WrestleMania. No. The reason everybody got mad back at the Royal Rumble when Brian was eliminated and Reigns won was how and when Brian was eliminated. He was eliminated early in the match. He came in early in the match. A lot of people think maybe he should have gone longer. At least then it would have created the illusion that Brian would have made it all the way to the end before Roman Reigns won the match. But we all knew that Roman was going to win the match, regardless. This was Roman Reigns' year. And the fact that WWE had The Rock on standby to run out after Roman after Roman eliminated Big Show and Kane just proved that they had already planned for Brian to get tossed early, for Ziggler to get eliminated the way he did, for Ambrose to get eliminated the way he did, and for Reigns to win. It was poor planning on WWE's part, and they've got to do a better job doing that next time and from here on out. Down to this match. It's going to be a great match. Pure brute strength. Pure force in Roman Reigns against the technical prowess of Daniel Bryan, who I guess you could say is the new best in the world since CM Punk took his ball and ran. <clears throat> Although I do wish Punk the best in his uh, endeavors at UFC. I think he'll be a phenomenal mixed martial artist whenever he finally debuts. But that makes Daniel Bryan the best technical wrestler on the roster right now, with Dolph Ziggler being second and obviously probably the new second most popular guy uh, when it comes to the younger talent. Uh, Orton will obviously take back his spot as number two when he comes back, because Cena's still number one. But back to this match. Daniel Bryan had his opportunity last year. There's such more, much more you could explore with Bryan later this year than by pushing him once again to a WWE title match. No. Roman Reigns won the Royal Rumble. Whether we like it or not, this was his year to win. And I think Roman versus Brock would be better for WrestleMania because you're talking about two forces that are pure strength, pure skill, pure power meeting each other. And you never know. This could be a fantastic match between the two. So I don't like the idea of adding Brian to the match or adding or uh, taking Reigns out and putting Brian in. I think Roman Reigns, he earned the opportunity. He won the Royal Rumble. He should face Brock Lesnar. Brian should look at something, doing something else. Especially since you had the reports shortly after the Rumble that he and Dolph Ziggler were thinking of doing a match. They were going to try and pitch a match between each other. You could always have Brian go after somebody else from the authority. Although there's really not much else left because you got uh, Rollins. You want Rollins at Orton. You're going to have, if you have Big Show and Kane teaming up to take on Ryback and Rowan, whether that happens or not. But you can always go in other directions with Daniel Bryan and still put on a fantastic contest. Although I think a lot of us will agree we don't want to see uh, Daniel versus Sheamus 3 after having it as a pre-show match at 27 and 18 seconds of it at WrestleMania 28. Um, and then lastly is the confrontation between Sting and Triple H. We already know what's going to happen. Triple H is going to come out, just tell Sting, leave, don't come back, or you're going to regret it. 
and Sting's going to say no, which is going to eventually lead to the match between the two at WrestleMania 31 in Santa Clara, California. But it's how this goes down. A friend of mine and I were talking, we both think Triple H, I personally think it's the segment's going to end, especially after how at Survivor Series, Sting dropped Triple H on his rear end to allow Cena's team to beat the authority. I think you're going to see the reverse. So I think Triple H is going to finish it by actually pedigreeing Sting. That way he has the upper hand going into this confrontation, and then the match will happen at WrestleMania. Now, this is the important part. Fastlane is the last show before WrestleMania. We we all know the lines are going to be coming. I think a drinking game should have been started a while ago. How many times are you going to hear, we're on the fast lane to WrestleMania? It's going to happen. We're going to have to deal with it. But this is now where you can start putting all the pieces of the puzzle together for WrestleMania. You have phenomenal matches that you're looking at putting together. Triple H, Sting. Um, you can have Cena, Rusev, too. Uh, Reigns versus Lesnar. The plan is still apparently for Bray Wyatt and The Undertaker. That's what those promos that Bray Wyatt's been doing on Raw and SmackDown these last few weeks has been trying to push for The Undertaker to come back. So hopefully, the Phenom is willing to come back. And we'll get further about WrestleMania as we get closer to it. But this is pretty much my preview for Fastlane. So it's like there's a lot going on between now and Sunday night. And I think the show will be pretty decent. I will say that Survivor Series, aside from a few, few low points here and there, was a pretty good pay-per-view the last time they did a free month of the WWE Network. Fastlane might be the same way, but you don't want to make Fastlane too great just because of what happened with the NXT Rival show from a few weeks ago. You don't want to make Fastlane too great that it takes away from what you're going to give us with WrestleMania. WrestleMania should still be where all the highest-rated matches, all the best talent in the company go at it, and should be a good one this year in California. I'll have my fallout from Fastlane on Monday. For now, thanks for watching.